You can't just dance or paint or write or sculpt. Those are just verbs. You need a tangible idea to get you going. The idea is what turns the verb into a noun, paint into a painting, sculpt into a sculpture, write into writing, dance into a dance. Twyla. I dressed like her today. I have my black shirt and my black jeans and I'm just channeling my Anna Twyla Tharp. Let's see what she has to say about generating ideas. Because <laughs> I need it. I love Twyla Tharp. We're gonna talk about Twyla Tharp in a second. When I gave myself this YouTube challenge of making 10 videos in the month of August, I didn't really know what I was going to do. So each video has been just kind of improv I had an idea of something I wanted to talk about or an idea of a short little sketch. I had and have no idea really what I'm doing, but I wanted to make sure that each video had three elements. So before I sat down to create anything, I thought to myself, this video needs to have three things. One, needs to be entertaining. Two, it needs to be valuable. And three, it needs to be honest. Today, I'm gonna to be honest with you. I have eight more days in the month of August to finish five videos. That means I'm gonna to have to do a video every, um, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm gonna have to make five more videos and life is getting a little bit busy. I have a couple of photo shoots coming up. I'm starting a new job. And on top of that, I feel creatively blocked. <sighs> yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I feel creatively blocked. And it's not a good time because I only have eight more days to finish, finish, to finish this challenge or else you know what I gotta do. Gotta donate to he who shall not be named. That's just not an option. That's not gonna happen. So I need to figure out a way to create five more videos before the month of August is over. Then I remember I said something back in my video, my creative habits that kick my ego's butt. Shameless plug, go watch the video, but come back and then continue watching this video. I remember something I said and I think I need to take my own advice. I wanna do these videos because I am sharing the brush strokes. So I'm sharing the brush strokes before it's a masterpiece. Because one day I will be a fucking masterpiece. But not yet. So here I am sharing the brush strokes. I figured I could sit down today and I can go through my process of how I go from having a little nugget of an idea and how I birth that out into the world and create a finished product. Product. All the while dealing with a timeline and feeling creatively blocked. Here we go. That's the honesty element of this video today. And now for the value, the valuable value. That's not gonna come from me today. Let's be honest, I'm, I'm feeling useless these days. It's gonna come from Twyla. Twyla, she's so cool. She wrote this book and I, I refer back to it time and time again because it's just about the creative habit. She's an American dancer and choreographer. She's done a bunch of really awesome, amazing masterpieces. But I know her from Moving Out on Broadway, the musical uh, contemporary kind of ballet set to Billy Joel songs. And she also choreographed Hair, the movie, the film, Hair. So the value part of this comes from Twyla today. Let's see what she has to say about generating ideas. Because <laughs> I need it. What you got for me? What you got for me, girl? Scratching. The first steps of a creative act are like groping in the dark. Random and chaotic, feverish and fearful, a lot of busyness with no apparent or definable end in sight. Yeah. These moments are not pretty. I look like a desperate woman, tortured by a simple message thumping away in my head, you need an idea. Although I look desperate, I don't feel desperate because I have a habitual routine to keep me going. Twyla, what's the routine? Tell me. I call it scratching. You know how you scratch away at a lottery ticket to see if you've won? That's what I'm doing when I begin a piece. I'm digging through everything to find something. What would Twyla do? Scratching is what you do when you can't wait for the thunderbolt to hit you. When inspiration does not come to me, I go halfway to meet it. Let me say that again. When inspiration does not come to me, I go halfway to meet it. So then she goes on to tell you where different artists go scratching. For her, she takes a video camera, goes to the studio, and improvises. She actually talks about turning her thinking 
brain off and just expressing through her body. So that's where she scratches. She watches back the video and she sees what movements and what expressions of her body stand out and then she incorporates that into her dance. Is this helping anyone? If this is helping you at all, if you're intrigued by this at all, just like tap the like button. I need validation. Just, just tap it. Tap the like button. You can subscribe too while you're at it. But she also talks about where other artists do their scratching. She says that storytellers and songwriters, sometimes they go and they listen to everyday conversations to hear that, that one you know, sentence, that one line of truth, that one reaction, that one confession. You could go to a coffee shop and eavesdrop and try to just like, you know, listen to what people are talking about. She also talks about you can scratch for ideas in other people's handiwork. So you can go to a museum and admire the paintings on the wall and let that inspire you. You could also scratch in the footsteps of your mentors and your heroes. You could use their paradigms as a starting point for ideas. And she talks about being very careful here. Of course, we're all influenced by someone or something, but you wanna be very careful that scratching among your mentors and heroes doesn't turn into imitation. So let me reframe that. If you are inspired by another artist, a mentor, a hero, you can examine that for what you like about it. And instead of imitating it, use that to kind of build off of it. Take it in and try to take note of what exactly is funny to you or what is truthful to you or what touches you about that piece of art and see if you could transform it into your own expression and your or your own words or your own movement or whatever. So I decided I'm going to scratch my way to an idea. I'm going to document the process so you're going to watch me struggle and I'm going to let you in on what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling and what I'm doing so that I can get to something. I need, at the end of this video, I need to have a plan on what I'm going to do in the next video. Because right now, at this very moment, I have no idea what I'm going to do. I need to do this. I have about one more hour before I have to get back to editing photos for a photo shoot. And then I start a new job tomorrow. So. <laughs> okay, one take in one spot. The camera needs to be stationary because nobody else is filming me. And I want it to be a scene um, that escalates. And I immediately thought of this film called, it's a short film, it's like four minutes long, it's called The Audition by Celia Rouse, Rouseen Hall, a filmmaker I really love. And then the other thing is something I heard about but I actually never watched it. Um, it's called the Duplass Brothers short film, This Is John, which is a seven minute Sundance short that helped launch their careers. And it stood out in my mind because I remember the plot being so simple yet so effective. And it was something like he tries to leave the perfect voicemail but keeps getting cut off and so it's like excruciatingly painful and awkward to watch, which I, have, of course, I love that. I'm gonna watch these, which is my form of scratching, and I'm going to write down the elements that inspired me in it, the parts of it that I liked, that I think I could build on and help me generate my own idea. I love those films. Those are both really, really good. You should watch them if you haven't already. I'll link them below. But you learn a lot about yourself when you write down what you love about a piece. These are things that I loved about This Is John. Things I connected to, things I feel are truthful for me as well. Okay. This Is John. Awkward and painful to watch him try to be someone else to present a version of himself. It's painful and funny. Painful and funny. His quest to be cool. Something so simple like leaving a voicemail leads to a nervous breakdown. The Audition by Celia Rousen Hall. I connected to trying too hard for something so small. Painful to watch her and funny to watch her try to be someone she's not. Interesting, I wrote that about This Is John as well. I wrote painful and funny. This reminds me of something else that Twyla Tharp talks about. She talks about your creative DNA. The things that you um, connect to, the things you respond to, the things that you're constantly creating work about, that is where you will find your creative DNA. It all kind of links together. It all kind of has the same truths in it, the same tone. So maybe that's part of my creative DNA. Painful and funny. Something else that I noted in both films that I liked was that something so simple leads to a breakdown. Now I'm going to move on to the next step, which is I'm going to take my own advice. I'm going to set a timer for eight minutes. Okay. Eight minutes. And I'm not allowed to think because I can feel myself starting to think already, but I want to brainstorm all the ways in which in either my living room or my kitchen or the bathroom, something 
in one location, one easy, you know, it could be one take that is painful and funny and simple things that could lead to a nervous breakdown. So I'm already feeling, I'm feeling myself judging, I'm judging, I'm gonna replace judgment with curiosity. Okay, here we go. Eight minutes on the clock, I'm gonna go. I'll see you when I get back. I just did a brain dump for eight minutes based off the prompt, a simple thing that leads to a nervous breakdown. And I have a few ideas. I can feel myself judging them. I could feel myself wanting to keep exploring some other ideas, but I don't have enough time. What's gonna happen in between the end of this video and when I post the finished product to YouTube, write out the first shitty draft as quickly as possible just to get it on the page. Like I said, I don't have a lot of time to do this. I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible and I'm not gonna overthink it. I'll probably give myself around an hour to shoot it. Um, so I am going to take five more minutes and I'm gonna look at the different ideas and I'm just gonna focus on what I feel the most connected to and I'm just gonna pick that and then I'm gonna run with it. I feel a little resistant but I'm just gonna do it because I'm gonna take my own advice. I'm not gonna think, I'm just gonna do it. It might be shit, but I'll have gotten through it and practiced the muscle of creating no matter what. It's not gonna kill me, I can do it. Okay, but how do I, I don't know. Um, I have to pick one, right? I have to pick one. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna pick one. <sighs> I'm thinking too much. I just need to pick something and go with it. What am I gonna do about this? don't know if I'm going to finish this. I'm going to go now. I'm, I'm, I have like an hour worth of gibberish to edit through. Wish me luck! <laughs>